Hey, welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Kicking things off last week, I checked out if AMD's Mighty Fury X was still worth buying. And as is always the case with graphics cards, it's really the price that makes or breaks them. And we've seen this time and time again in the past. Uh, what could be a bad buy one week could quickly become the new must-have item after a price drop. In the case of the Fury X, it went on sale for $650 US back in mid-2015, and at the time it struggled against Nvidia's then flagship GTX 980 Ti, which was released earlier in the same month. And yes, yes, I know, the Titan X was the real flagship GPU of the time, but at over 50% more expensive for less than 10% more performance, it wasn't exactly relevant. Anyway, getting back on track, the Fury X really came up against it as Nvidia was hitting full stride with their Maxwell architecture. Still, the Fury X was a marvel of engineering, and will always be one of history's most exciting and interesting graphics cards, even if the sales didn't reflect that. Recently, major online retailers such as Amazon have been letting remaining Fury X stock go quite cheap, some as low as $300 US, so I wanted to see if it was indeed worth buying one of these GPUs at that price. There are also, of course, the possibility of second-hand deals, so knowing where the Fury X sits in today's landscape would be useful for potential buyers. Coming away from that initial video, a few of you were disappointed I didn't test the GTX 980 Ti as well. Well, never fear, you haven't had to wait long. For this video, I'm including the GTX 980 Ti and comparing it with the Fury X as well as the relevant current generation GPUs. The GTX 980 Ti isn't on sale anymore, given it was effectively replaced by the GTX 1070 back in June of 2016. Sellers such as Newegg.com do have refurbished stock, but they are priced above the GTX 1070s, so obviously not worth buying then. That said, second-hand deals can be found for around $300 US, and at that price, the 980 Ti might start to become a worthwhile investment. On hand for testing, I have the reference model of the GTX 980 Ti, and that's okay because we had the reference Fury X for comparison. Uh, technically, there are no custom-designed Fury X cards. Uh, they're all based on AMD's reference design, and to my knowledge, there's no factory overclocked models available. So anyway, previously I didn't bother overclocking the Fury X because I know it to be a pretty terrible overclocker if I'm honest. However, because I will be overclocking the 980 Ti for this comparison, I've gone back and overclocked the Fury X as best I can. By default, the 980 Ti runs at a base clock of 1GHz with a maximum boost clock of 1.2GHz and a memory speed of 1.75GHz. Overclocked, I was able to push the core to a base clock speed of 1.2GHz, which resulted in a boost clock speed of 1.48GHz. The memory also reached 2GHz for a transfer rate of 8 gigabits per second. So that's a 25% overclock for the core and a 14% boost for the memory. The Fury X, which I tried a few different tricks with, only went as high as 1150 MHz for the core and 525 MHz for the memory. So that's a 10% core overclock and a 5% memory overclock. Okay, so one final note. Previously, I tested the Fury X using 19 modern games, but for this comparison, I've reduced that number to just six games. Having now seen how the GTX 1070 and Fury X compare in a broad range of new games, I didn't feel there was a need to go over all the data again with the 980 Ti. Instead, I've removed games that provided outlier type results. For example, Dishonored 2, Quantum Break, Watch Dogs 2, F1 2016, Overwatch, and Rise of the Tomb Raider were all dropped as they heavily favoured the GTX 1070. However, I also removed Doom, Total War Warhammer, Hitman, and Deus Ex Mankind Divided because they all favoured or at least helped the Fury X close the gap on the GTX 1070. Games that provided competitive results included Battlefield 1, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, Gears of War 4, Far Cry Primal, Mirror's Edge Catalyst, and The Division. So these are the games I'll be focusing on for this quick comparison, as they'll give us a really good idea of how the GTX 980 Ti and Fury X compare in modern titles. Anyway, enough chit chat, let's get to the results. First up we have Far Cry Primal, and here we previously found that the Fury X was good for an average of 58 FPS at 1440p using the ultra quality settings. Overclocked the Fury X pushed the average frame rate to 60 FPS, a mere 3% performance bump. Out of the box, the reference 980 Ti matched the overclocked Fury X with a 60 FPS average and a 51 FPS minimum, so that's quite competitive. It also meant that the GTX 980 Ti was just 8% slower than the GTX 1070 Founders Edition graphics card. However, the 980 Ti does have quite a bit left in the tank, and this can be exploited through overclocking. Our overclock boosted the average frame rate by 17%, allowing for 70 FPS with a 58 FPS minimum. This made the reference 980 Ti faster than even the factory overclocked Gigabyte GTX 1070 G1 gaming graphics card by a 6% margin. 
The Fury X wasn't a great deal slower than the GTX 1070 Founders Edition graphics card in Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. That said, overclocking it only boosted performance by 3% to come within a frame of the Founders Edition graphics card. Still, when compared to the GeForce GTX 982 I in this title, the Fury X is 6% faster at the stock operating clock speeds. Of course, very few GTX 982i graphics cards met the NVIDIA specifications, and most were quite heavily factory overclocked. While perhaps not as fast as our custom overclock, we found that it is possible to squeeze another 17% out of the GTX 980 Ti, taking the average frame rate to 83 FPS. That made it 8% faster than our overclocked Fury X configuration and 4% faster than Gigabyte's GTX 1070 G1 gaming model. The Gears of War 4 results are quite shocking. In fact, I was so surprised I ran the stock and overclocked GTX 980 Ti configuration multiple times. At the stock clock speeds, the GTX 980 Ti matched the Fury X with similar performance, making them both slightly slower than the GTX 1070 G1 gaming. However, once overclocked, the GTX 980 Ti somehow finds 26% more performance in this title, boosting the average frame rate to 91 FPS. That huge performance gain meant that the GTX 980 Ti was not only much faster than the Fury X and factory overclocked GTX 1070, but it wasn't a great deal slower than the GTX 1080. Mirror's Edge Catalyst provides more typical results, though even here the overclocked GTX 980 Ti looks very impressive. At the stock clock speeds, the 980 Ti was actually 3% slower than the Fury X. However, once we overclock both graphics cards, the 980 Ti finds itself with a rather commanding 11% lead and is again able to edge out the Gigabyte GTX 1070 G1 Gaming. The division was tested using the DirectX 12 API, and here the GTX 980 Ti really struggled with an average of just 51 FPS, making it just 5 FPS faster than the RX 480 and 15% slower than the Fury X. However, the 980 Ti is again rescued by its overclocking prowess. Here we see a 24% boost in performance as the frame rate hits 63 FPS to match the overclocked Fury X. The GTX 980 Ti only gains an extra 15% performance from overclocking when testing with Battlefield 1, but again that is enough to not only pull ahead of the Fury X, but also beat graphics cards such as Gigabyte's GTX 1070 G1 Gaming. The power consumption results are really interesting. The GTX 980 Ti only consumed 16% more power once overclocked, which is quite impressive since we regularly saw performance gains of at least 20%. Moreover, with a total system consumption of 341 watts, the overclocked 980 Ti only consumed the same level of power as the standard Fury X. Speaking of the Fury X, given how small those performance gains were, it doesn't make sense to overclock this graphics card, especially when the total system consumption is increased by 18%. Nvidia's GeForce GTX 980 Ti is still clearly a very capable graphics card, and this is why many who bought it back in 2015 still haven't bothered upgrading to something like the GTX 1070 or even the GTX 1080. Comparing a stock standard 980 Ti is a little misleading, as very few would have purchased a reference or stock clocked card, and those that did likely ended up overclocking it anyway, as there's so much more extra performance to be had. Our overclock, which was extremely easy to achieve, boosted the performance on average by 20%, and I don't need to tell you that's pretty huge. So while the GTX 980 Ti might have been 4% slower on average than the Fury X, once both graphics cards were overclocked it was 11% faster. Although I did only test with half a dozen games for this quick comparison, the games tested did show competitive results between the GTX 1070 and Fury X in my last video, so this should have made for a fair comparison between the 980 Ti and Fury X. When compared to the GTX 1070, the overclocked 980 Ti configuration was on average 7% faster than the Gigabyte G1 gaming model. So again, this is why 980 Ti owners are waiting for something faster like the 1080 Ti or possibly even Vega before they upgrade. Right now, the cheapest GTX 1070 graphics cards are selling for around $375 US, though I should mention that last week Gigabyte were letting their Mini ITX OC model go for as little as $360 US. Anyway, given those prices, I made the recommendation that those shopping for a Fury X probably should look at spending around $300. And since you'll be buying a 980 Ti secondhand, I really don't recommend spending much over $300 again, especially since for this purchase, you probably won't be getting any warranty. Anyway, I'm keen to hear from you guys. Has anyone picked up a cheeky 980 Ti deal or plan to in the very near future? Let me know in the comments section below. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll catch you on the next one.